Okay, we're on. Hey everybody. Hey YouTube. Uh, I got a microphone now, so I hope the audio sounds better. Um, got my tea. I didn't work out yet, yo. And uh, today's topic is about devaluation. Uh, by de psych devaluation in psychology. I mean, I'm not talking about like... Uh, I have an $800 car outside, for instance, and next year it's going to be worth $600. I don't know. I'm not talking about price devaluation. I'm talking about human being devaluation on a level of uh, when, when someone was once idealized and they bring them up to here, then they drop them down to here. Uh, I was wondering, like, why do people do this? You know, what the fuck? So I'm, I, whenever people do this to me, I always want to self-reflect and say well what's making them do this behavior or what are if this behavior is exhibited in other people then uh, they must share the same traits of some personality disorder or whatever right so thanks to the magic of the internet and Google you know I looked this shit up and uh, it's uh, I've learned that devaluation is a coping mechanism of people that have a variety of cluster B personality disorders. Okay, mostly they could be borderline. They're not really psychotic or sociopathic, but they're either narcissistic, borderline, or one of many other shades of this, right? Malignant narcissists, covert narcissists. I don't know. There's lots of uh, people. There are lots of different categories that uh, these people can be into. Anyway, put that aside. Put that up there. Uh, let's, let's, let me just read this for definition. I had to go and Google, Google fucking, um, this shit anyway. So, Googling psych, psychology devaluation, it says, in psychiatry and psychology, devaluation is a defense mechanism that is just the opposite of idealization. It's used when a person attributes themselves an object or another person is completely flawed, worthless, or is having exaggerated negative qualities. How do you, this says also in Google here, how do you devalue somebody? The value you placed in someone else subconsciously inspires the value you place in yourself. Similarly, when you devalue others, your sense of well-being starts to crumble. You, off, you become more narrow-minded and callous in your perceptions of others and oftentimes violate your own basic sense of humanity. And this is called a splitting defense mechanism for people that have personality disorders, BPD and shit like that. All right, so with that def clinical definition or whatever on there, I'm gonna go tell my stories now because that's what I do the best here. It's my fucking show, the Shimmy Show, yay! So, um, lately, this, this, is, this is a story I'll start off by talking about my mom and me, the relationship that I have. Uh, I'm not, you know, I talk about everybody else, so it would be wrong if I didn't self-reflect and talk about me, my life, and what makes me tick. I think it's only fair, you know, because I do criticize people. If people mistreat or abuse me or whatever, of course I criticize them and I correct them and I, I'm like, hey, the fuck's going on but above all I want to like stop and like say what's going on or what's motivating their behavior or what what's motivating them to treat me in this way that's undesirable you know the question goes back and sometimes you got to go back to their childhood and I got to burn up more brain power but if you really really truly and dearly care about somebody you'll take you'll take it upon yourself to not only figure yourself out, but to figure out them too and see what like motivates them to do what they do. Because if you find out what motivates them, you'll better understand them and you'll have a better sense of how shit operates in their world and in their head and have a better idea of how to approach or not approach them and shit, right? So in my case of uh, my mom, uh, you, you know, you got your mama for life. I love my mama as everyone else should, you know, but things are like, uh, if someone has personality disorders and they devalue you and things like that, you know, it's like you're weighing positive and negative traits here. Abuse is abuse, whether it comes from your mama, your wife, your girlfriend, your fucking dog. It doesn't matter. It, abuse is abuse. Recog recognize it. Once you study and find out what it is and what someone's saying to you and you break down the coded language, then you can determine why they're calling you, what they want from you what's going on in their life uh, what are they going through some rough spots uh, all these are like like feelers that you can reach out once you see what 
kind of shit people ask you and what they dig for and how they just volunteer information to you. Just like me talking on YouTube to my fucking camera here. Uh, people with personality disorders mostly, or people that are troubled, they will likely uh, just listen to them. They want, they want someone to listen to them to validate their, uh, not validate their existence, I would say, but validate their opinions. You know what I'm saying? They, they, don't, they need another form or another locus of control, and maybe they haven't discovered YouTube or some other group or some other like-minded group of individuals who think like they do. So they'll test out and fuck with you as like some kind of experiment. It's pretty sick actually, really. But uh, yeah, so devaluation, here's my, sto here's my story, my story, hashtag black moms, okay? My own shimmy story from the shimmy show. So um, I've, I've been noticing, well, I've broken, I've broken contact with a lot of people in like the past, well, a couple of years, but I mean, lately, specifically in the past couple of six months or so, some have been like lifelong friendships, relationships, family, friend, whatever. If I found out something was unhealthy for me or someone's using me, fucking abusing me, riding me out and trapping me or just doing some other non-positive shit, I've pretty much broken contact with them by following many no contact strategies and all this psychology shit that I play. Let's look on my favorites list or something if you have time, if it's channel still up, you know. But uh, <laughs> I gotta shut this shit down for real. But like for real, uh, examining myself, I'm like, wow, why is, uh, why is my own mama devaluing me? But she's doing it in a way that it's subtle. Most, most forms of abuse are subtle. And that's what really, I mean, that tends to like dig under your skin a little bit, you know, so. Yeah, anyway, here's my story. Let me just tell the story, then I'll let you guys be the judge of it or whatever, right? So, uh, mom calls me up, another typical day. I haven't heard from her in a couple days, and you know, I'm busy and shit, so I finally call her back. And I'm like, hey, how's it going? You know, blah, 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 blah. What's going on? Her chance to talk or whatever. So she's, nothing's going on, everything's fine, but she tells me a story that she went to the grocery store the other day, to Costco, whatever. And uh, she saw one of her old students, because she was a teacher or whatever, so she tells me, you know, the student was in the lot or some shit. I don't know how they recognize them from so long ago, but uh, I've had crazier stories happen to me. I've had people come up to me at BART train stations from the uh, OJJDP and tell me they went to fucking kindergarten with me when I didn't even go to kindergarten, you know, it's crazy. So whenever people tell you they know you from your childhood or elementary school, you're like, huh? Whatever. So anyway. Side story, fucking uh, the student of hers says like, so she tells me uh, he lives out far away, bought a house somewhere for $200,000 or some shit far away. They've got to commute to go there because it's expensive where they live at. And she says to me, here's the message to me. Uh, she says, the dude says, if you know anybody who's looking for a job, they hire in here and this and this and this and this and this, right? It seems harmless, innocuous, uh, like just like a statement that someone would just throw out there like a blanket. But then I questioned my mom. I said, why are you telling me of all people this story? There's other people in family, friends, neighbors and shit who need a job. I don't need a fucking job. I've got my fucking schedule full. You know, I'm doing my sh But just Google me. Okay, I won't even get into it, but I'm like one of the busiest motherfuckers you'll ever know. I just don't got time for shit, okay? I'm just, I'm just that nigga. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just hearing this out and what, what my brain is hearing through the process is that my mom is telling me that my business or my life choices or my everything that I do is not good enough to her. This is like one of those subtle put downs where it's like saying, why can't you be like this guy, this old student of mine who pushes, I don't know what they do at Costco, pushes shopping carts or checks people's out or rotates tires. It can't be that complicated. Many years ago when I got out of this other adult industry biz, I, I was a truck driver for a couple years and I delivered the trucks to trailers to the back of Costco's and Sam's Clubs and shit and it's a pretty shitty job. That's a truck driving a shitty job too. But my point is about the devaluation. My mom, my own mama, is telling me basically, like, hey, I met this old student of mine, he says they're hiring, whatever. It's like I said, it seems subtle, like it's just straight up throwing it out there statement, right? But if it's directed at me, 
I'm like, hey, wait a minute. So knowing what I'm studying now, I went into the process of correcting my mom and saying back to her, hey, repeat what you just said or what did you say again? And I noticed that she backpedaled, right? I wanted her to repeat the part about if you know of anybody who's hiring, you know, whatever, whatever, let them know, right? So I asked her to, re I asked her to have me retell the story. It's like that police interrogation room fucking uh, read technique shit, you know? Shit those motherfuckers be trying, you know? So I'm, I'm, pulling, I'm putting this shit back on her like that. And she omits this entire part of the story about the guy saying, oh, they're hiring or something. Oh, I just met this old student of mine, whatever. No, no, no. I'm like, no, no, no. Tell me again what you said before that. And she wouldn't repeat it because, you know, I busted her in the act. And I told her exactly what I'm telling you guys to the camera here. Don't devalue me. Or if you have somebody you love or care about, don't devalue them or their life choices or for God's sakes, their fucking work or the way that they feed themselves. That's very disrespectful. No matter what the person does. If they're not robbing you or stealing from you or doing some other fuck shit like trying to entrap you like some other people that I know, you know, if they're not like actively working to fuck with you, leave them alone. What the fuck? Why do you care? What does it matter if I fucking peel potatoes for a living? Whatever. I'm not robbing you. But my point is here, um, I'm, I'm just kind of in this mode here where I'm talking back to my moms and I'm like, hey, uh, well, I'm a little busy here. I'm traveling. I'm doing this, shooting movies. Um, if you guys don't know, I'm a webmaster, computer nerd guy, whatever and shit. And that takes a lot of time. I'm working out. I'm doing races. Look, I got six pack abs, you know, I'm doing shit. <laughs> and uh, to my own mom, I'm still just some nigga that don't have a job. And it's pretty disheartening. You know, um, this isn't the first time this has happened. This isn't this is um, this is like a regularly occurring thing. That's why I bring up the evaluation here. I've heard this story before from her about you know, there's like, we have some relatives in our family. One guy's a fucking astronaut or some shit. And she's always talking about, oh, this so-and-so's an astronaut and so-and-so. I'm like, yeah, and maybe I don't want to go fucking in space and shit. Or maybe I don't want to do that. Or maybe I don't want to be a construction worker or a fucking dentist or a doctor or whatever. I don't, <laughs> if you can't tell, my body's not too cut out for manual labor and that kind of thing. Anyway, I'm a creative kind of motherfucker. I like doing what I do. So... Yeah, it just really, uh, I'm telling you, those subtle put downs and devaluation, they actually hurt more than if someone were just to be like, hey, fuck you, nigger, or whatever to your face, or some shit like, hey, rah, rah, rah. I'd rather much take that. I'd, I'd much rather take it like a slap in the face from my ex-wife who's good at that.